Welcome back to the Wet's Cooking Show. Again, we have Pin Topkins here, and he's with the uh, New Iberia Chamber of Commerce, uh, introducing the 23rd, 23rd annual gumbo cook-off that's coming up. Pin, where are we at on our gumbo? Well, we've got our meat browned, and we're going to add some vegetables. Uh, we talked about our stock, and one of the things that really gives it flavor is to brown the meat uh, very well. So we browned our sausage. This is called the, the Trinity, and uh, they will tell you that it's onion, bell pepper, and celery. Uh, the recipe that will be available after the show uh, uh, says exactly how much of each one, but it's uh, onion, bell pepper, and celery. And we want our vegetables not to get too wilted, but we want them to, uh, to blend because we will, we will boil it. I have a different Trinity. My... <laughs> Mine is uh, onions, bell pepper, and garlic. Mm -hmm. Very good because I knew that I garlic was coming in love somewhere. Love some garlic. I knew that garlic was I'm, coming. I'm glad he brought that up because I also enjoy garlic. <laughs> and I use the garlic because garlic is kind of like a skunk oil in perfume. It carries the, the essence and a garlic. You don't want to overpower the gumbo with any one flavor, but I do like to put a, a little garlic in there because it does help carry flavor. You know, over the years I've, I've heard <coughs> that you extract more flavor out of garlic by simmering it in a liquid than you would than you do sautéing it like this and I never really knew if that was true or not I heard that I don't I don't know well as you can see we don't have a fire that's scorching but we're uh, we're, co we're coming right along we're gonna start with our uh, chicken stock that I mentioned I'm the sous chef just ask me what you very mean. nice <laughs> But as our vegetables are coming along, we're gonna add some of the stock. And we were talking off camera that when you boil the uh, stock, if you let it cool, you'll come with some chicken fat on top. And some people say, oh, that's where all the flavor is. That's also where 100% of the fats are. My hospital would close down, basically, if people lived more healthy, mm -hmm. they wouldn't need the hospital services. So those people that are on Lipitor and uh, all the yeah. statin drugs, uh, their doctors are telling them to try to reduce the fat uh, that you're having. Of course. Now that said that, yes, we have sausage here. Uh, you could use a turkey sausage if you're uh, so inclined, but we're making a traditional gumbo. But the one thing we're gonna do is not add all of the saturated fat. Yep. <coughs> Like we were saying, you could <clears throat> once you make your stock, you could refrigerate it, and if it's uh, right out of the refrigerator, um, it's very easy to skim. All that fat comes to the top and it kind of gels, and it'd be very easy to remove. Um, you know, some people like the fat. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they don't care. Well, it's always easy to remove. Like you said, once it's cold, it just, just scoom it off. That was today and earlier. Um, we make a, a smoked duck and andouille gumbo. When I make the stock from a, a smoked duck bones, that the fat, the duck fat is, is different. And whenever you uh, refrigerate that stock, you can, it's so, it, it gels so hard, you can take tongs and remove that fat. Wow. But then again, you could also, uh, it's so much flavor in it, you could also use that, that duck fat that you're removing, saute something in it, maybe brown some uh, meat in it mm -hmm. for another dish. Um, we we want to come to about two thirds of the, the pot is what, what I like to do. We're gonna add the chicken, we don't want it to boil over, but when we add the roux, it's actually gonna froth up. We want it to boil and it will boil the, uh, once, once it's frothed, it kind of foams up and, it, and it raises up and you can't have it too close to the top because it, it'll well, overflow. overflow. It will overflow. Everyone that's ever made a gumbo knows that, even so, the amateurs. Well, the, the amateurs will find that uh, if they don't follow that uh, little yeah. piece of advice, they'll, they'll have a big mess on their stove. You have to clean the stove up. That is correct. No one wants to do that. Well, as we're waiting for this to come to a bowl, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Saturday at the uh, gumbo cook-off. Saturday is anything but gumbo. So they'll have a red beans and rice contest for people that want to come down and cook red cook beans something. and rice. Uh, you'll have a lot of good food down there. You'll have frog legs. You'll have an alligator sauce piquant. People will cook squirrel. Uh, there'll be traditional things like uh, chicken and sausage jambalaya. Yeah, the good stuff. Dif different foods, but uh, all of that is Saturday. Also Saturday, they're going to have Troy Landry, some good, uh, nice guests from the History uh, Channel. Uh, Swamp People will be down there with his son, and uh, 
if you've seen uh, Troy and, and Jacob, you know that shoot him, shoot him. <laughs> so uh, he'll be there to sign autographs all afternoon on Saturday from 2 to 6. Uh, also, you can enjoy Chubby Carrier and the Bayou Swamp Band. And uh, in the evening, they'll have Chris Ardua uh, play until uh, 10 p.m. That sounds like a good day. Well, Jason, I noticed on the uh, brochure that one of our good friends is going to be in the gumbo cook-off. Louisiana, Louisiana Culinary Institute. Oh, yeah, really? Okay. Colt Pate. <coughs> Colt. It might not be him. It may yeah, be it might be. That's what I thought. But, but usually he does it. Yeah, usually you're right. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, big teams that spend uh, a lot of money, and then there's some mom and pop teams, uh, every, everything in between. So uh, they're. Fun for everyone. Goes like that. That's correct. Uh, there's a team this year coming in from Japan. Uh, this is the first year for them, but they are coming from Japan, and uh, the chamber is looking forward to welcoming them uh, as a special guest. International gumbo cook-off. <laughs> it wow. turns out to be that way. There's a team that's been multi-years from Indiana, uh, several teams from Texas, Mississippi, and all points of Louisiana. Right. Nationwide. Well, uh, you had mentioned earlier about um, putting the ingredients on the website, which is to remind everybody at home, you can go to our website and get all the uh, recipes that are done here on the show. Just go to www.kdce.com, click on the What's Cooking Show, and it's been updated, revised. Steve has put everything nice and neat together for us. So he's been really nice. a lot of weeks working on it, so and he does yeah. have it all updated, and for your convenience, go to it and find out what lots recipe you Lots and lots want. of recipes, pictures of all the rest of the dishes, things like that. So. Um, you know, this, if you're looking for a dish to cook this weekend and you don't know exactly what to cook, there's categories. You can go in there and look at what you want. Make Salad, soups, gumbos, whatever you want. Good job, Steve. We're going to go ahead and uh, start, uh, now that our stock has come to a boil, we're going to add some roux. And roux, again, is based on the color that you like. So uh, you'll go to some very good places to eat, and they'll have a lighter roux. Uh, you'll go to others, and they'll have a darker roux. This is all a matter of a taste. Preference. Right. And you'll see all of that at the gumbo cook -off. Okay, Pin, we're going to go ahead and take another small commercial break, and uh, we'll come back with Pin and more gumbo. <laughs> 